In the early 40s, RKO Pictures was suffering from financial difficulties. The box office failures of Orson Welles' Citizen Kane and The Magnificent Ambersons, as well as the abandoned documentary It's All True, left the studio in ruin. In desperation, the studio turned to low-budget B-Pictures to regain stability, inspired by the continuous success of Universal Studios' monster movies. At the helm of RKO's newly formed horror division was writer-turned-producer Val Luton. Luton had started out as a story editor under auteur producer David O. Selznick, but eventually sought more control over his work. RKO's new position gave Luton that control. However, this job too had limitations. Luton's productions were to run no longer than 75 minutes, cost less than $150,000, and be written around titles given to him by his superiors. Taking a cue from Universal's The Wolfman, the first title Luton received was Cat People. Rather than make a cheap monster movie, Luton elevated the plot of Cat People by having it focus on its character's psychology. The film's plot revolves around a woman's fear that her ancestry has cursed her with the uncontrollable ability to turn into a violently aggressive panther. Luton used atmosphere and suspense to turn an otherwise absurd idea into a horror classic, and understood that what you don't see is often scarier than what you do. Through long periods of silence and misdirection, Luton gave audiences their first false scare. Coined the Luton Buzz, this technique has been used in countless films since, ironically evolving into the so-called cat scare. <coughs> cat People was released in 1942 and exceeded its box office expectations. This success allowed Luton more freedom on future pictures. For his next film, the producer reteamed with Cat People director Jacques Tourneur. Given the title, I Walked with a Zombie, Luton asked his writers to mix the story of Jane Eyre with Haitian voodoo culture. Despite the seemingly incongruous influences, the skills of Luton and Tourneur again resulted in a successfully eerie and suspenseful film, which saw release in 1943. That same year, Luton and Tourneur collaborated for the last time on the title, The Leopard Man. The producer again subverted the suggestions of the title by crafting the film into a murder mystery. In it, a string of killings occur that could be the work of an escaped leopard, or a killer disguising the deaths as such. For one of the film's most suspenseful scenes, Luton reworked Cat People's bus scare, this time with a train. After the success of Luton's first three films, RKO promoted him to work on A Pictures. However, after being told he couldn't use editor Mark Robson to direct an A film, he requested he continue working in B Pictures. Luton and Robson's film, 1943's The Seventh Victim, focuses on a woman's discovery of a devil-worshipping cult. It seems Luton's workplace pessimism found its way into the film. At the picture's end, the young woman hangs herself under the influence of the cult. Luton and Robson's following film, The Ghost Ship, wasn't created around its title, but a leftover set. Archeo suggested Luton make use of their pre-existing ocean liner, and the producer devised a story about a series of deaths aboard a sea vessel with a mentally unstable captain. When Luton was forced to create a sequel to Cat People, he again promoted one of his editors, Robert Wise, to the director's chair. 1944's The Curse of the Cat People surprised audiences by taking the form of a psychological fantasy drama. Involving a child's imaginary friendship with the spirit of the original film's Cat Lady, The Curse of the Cat People represents Luton's growing urge to step away from horror and into other genres. The producer strayed further from horror with his next two films, Mademoiselle Fifi and Youth Runs Wild, both from 1944. RKO signed Universal horror star Boris Karloff to a contract after reassessing their horror formula due to the declining profits of Luton's work. Although Luton was initially reluctant to work with Karloff, the inclusion of the star finally allowed him the freedom to choose his own material, and the two eventually formed a friendship. Luton's first picture with Karloff was adapted from Robert Louis Stevenson's The Body Snatcher, about a murderous medical cadaver supplier. 
RKO furthered their competition with Universal by casting another of their former horror stars, Bella Lugosi, in a minor role. Luton and Karloff's follow-up, The Isle of the Dead, involved soldiers trapped on a plague-infested island and was inspired by Arnold Breckland's painting of the same name. 1946's Bedlam, Luton's final film for RKO, put Karloff in the role of a villainous asylum master and took inspiration from William Hogarth's engraving series, A Rake's Progress. RKO changed studio heads in 1946, and Luton was subsequently fired. Luton only produced three more films before succumbing to heart complications in 1951, at the age of 46. However, the producer's legacy lived on through Jacques Tourneur's Luton-esque Curse of the Demon in 1957, and Robert Wise's The Haunting in 1963. By evading the monster movie cliches of his titles, Luton was able to focus on contemporary concerns such as psychology and murder, themes more predominant in the horror films of the 60s. While Luton had little opportunity to create an A picture or step outside the horror genre, what he did accomplish raised the bar of the B movie. <laughs>